Chiying. Your Highness, are you listening? Shilin asked as he reached out and waved his hands in front of Chuan Yijin. Chuan Yijin seemed to have spaced out and only now did his spirit return to his body. Oh, he said. It appeared he wasn't listening. Shilin wasn't in the position to say much, so he said instead. This mission is urgent. And we have to find that brocade robe. Its original form is... Chuan Yijin interrupted. A sleeveless, headless, gunny sack-like, blood-soaked robe. Shilian smiled and said, So you do know. I thought that you didn't read the scroll. But since this robe is a wicked object, extremely magical, it has thousands of forms. There are millions of clothes in this world, so to search for such a robe is no different from seeking a needle in the ocean. Oh, Chuan Yijin said, then what should we do? Shilian explained, ghosts and demons who get their hands on the robe will usually transform into a merchant and beseech people to buy or exchange old for new in busy streets. But that's from centuries ago. If anyone was to do this now, it would be considered strange. However, their habits and ways of doing things won't change so easily or so fast. In any case, let's go into town and see if we can catch wind of any such occurrences. Ghosts would be more interested in such an object than mortals. Obtaining underground information from the ghost realm would be much faster than in the mortal realm, which meant that asking Hua Chang directly would surely save a lot of trouble. However, it wasn't too long ago that Shilian had told him that they shouldn't meet for the time being, and it wouldn't look good to go back on his words the moment he needed something. Besides, the brocade immortal was only just stolen, and the robber might not dare be so swift in bringing it out to cause harm. Chuan Yijin nodded, rose to his feet, and followed Shilian for a few steps. Shilian noticed that Lang Ying also followed suit, so he told him, You stay here. Lang Ying shook his head. Before Shilian could say any more, there was a sudden thud behind him. Chuan Yijin had collapsed again. Shilian whipped around, are you all right? he asked. That shade of purple was colouring Chuan Yijin's face again, and a moment later, unable to hold back any longer, he finally flipped over, crashed onto the floor, and puked all over it. After puking, Chuan Yijin rolled over, his face facing upwards, his soul leaving from his mouth. Chi Ying, can you still walk? Shilin asked carefully. Chuan Yijin had his limbs all stretched out flat. I think I can't, he said. Woeful, Shilin could only drag Chuan Yijin, who had lost all willpower to fight, over to the side and cover him with a blanket, letting him recover for the moment. It took until the next day before Chuan Yijin looked slightly better. Either way, Shilin didn't dare let him eat anything from the shrine. He asked for some porridge from the village head's home, bringing it back to fill the stomach of the other two. Chuan Yijin sat in the spot that Ho Chang usually occupied, and for some reason, Lan Ying kept staring at him, seemingly unfriendly. Shilin placed the porridge in front of the two and subconsciously murmured, San Lang. Before the words completely left his lips, the two turned around to look at him. Shilin instantly froze, and only then did he realize what he had blurted out. He cleared his throat softly and said, Please continue. The two sat at the altar table, eating their porridge, while Shilin took up the axe and went outside. As he chopped the wood, he thought back on the clues that the scroll had provided. 
The brocade immortal was first sealed under a great martial temple, and the seal of that temple was extremely powerful. Skilled masters filled the ranks of the heavy security guarding the hall, and a simple arousal of ghosts should not have allowed it to escape on its own, which meant someone had eyed the opportunity and stole it away amidst the chaos. Before, it was always Hua Chang who chopped wood. Now that he was doing it himself, for some reason, it didn't feel like the wood he chopped was as good as Hua Chang's. Chuan Yijun pathetically drank a few mouthfuls of watery porridge and fell over directly to keep sleeping within Puchi Shrine. Lang Ying, on the other hand, came out looking to help. There's no need, son, Lang Ying, heat some water and take a bath, Shi Lian said. Now that he thought about it, Lang Ying didn't seem to have bathed in a long time. Ghosts certainly wouldn't have the trouble of skin oils and grime, but hanging out outside all day, surely there was dirt. Still, he couldn't point it out so straightforwardly, lest he hurt other people's self-esteem. Lang Ying seemed to be taken aback and didn't respond, but Shilian had already carried a bundle of logs inside to heat water. I sold some scraps in town yesterday and bought you two autumn robes. Once you're done bathing, why don't you see if they fit you? Shilian said. Lang Ying was just putting on the new robes, but hearing him, he turned to leave without a word. Shilian grabbed onto him, chiding solemnly. Don't go. Bathing is without question. Don't worry. I won't unwrap the bandages on your head. Lang Ying still protested and went out the door to chop wood gloomily, refusing to come back in. Exasperated, Shilin could only go grab some logs, then peeled off his own clothes while the water heated. Roya looped around Shilin's chest, unwrapping itself. Lang Ying came back in, a large bundle of logs in his hold. When he saw Shilin with his upper body bare, his eyes instantly widened. Shilin, on the other hand, was testing the temperature of the water with his hand, thinking that it was just right. He was already submerging into the bath with his underpants on. Seeing Lang Ying come in, he called up. Oh, perfect timing. Can you please pass me the scroll that's hung under the bamboo hat on the wall? Not only did Lang Ying not come over, he backed all the way outside and with a pang, he shut the door. Shilian was puzzled. Not a moment later, it seemed that Lang Ying remembered something and forcefully kicked the door open. Shilian hastily cried, Don't kick that door. That door is... Lang Ying, however, didn't spare a look at him. He walked straight inside, picked up Chuan Yijin, who was laying on the floor like a stiff corpse, and dragged him out the door. Chuan Yijin seemed to be deeply asleep. Only a vent on the level of a shaking mountain could rouse him. So, he felt nothing while getting dragged along the entire way. Shilian didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. What are you doing? he asked. It's alright. It's not like I'm a girl. Come in. At least, when Ho Chang wasn't around, it wasn't like he hadn't bathed inside Puchi Shrine. After all, Puchi Shrine really was too small. Its ability to provide for the needs of daily life was minimal. That there was a water barrel for bathing was already enough. There wasn't a pool bath with screens stretching over meters long to let him row a boat where he played and bathed. However, whether intentional or not, Shilin had never bathed in front of Ho Chang since the one before him right now wasn't Hua Chang, but someone else, he didn't feel like there was anything to be concerned about. Lang Ying flipped Chuan Yijin over onto his stomach and grabbed a few random clothes to pile over his head. Then he himself took that scroll Shilian asked for and passed it over with his head bowed. 
Then he continued to sit facing the corner. Shelian, on the other hand, rolled open the scroll and was reading through it carefully while he let his hair loose. Steam warmed his face, giving it a rosy glow. His long hair and lashes were shimmering black and dripping wet. He felt a silver chain on his chest. At the end of the chain, there hung a diamond ring. Shilin gripped that ring, closing his fingers tightly around it. At the periphery of his vision, he saw that on the corner of the altar, there was a tiny little flower. He picked up that flower and brought it before his eyes, feeling his mind cloud, just like the lingering hot air surrounding him. He needed to spare a hand to wave away the haze. Just then, a series of knocks sounded outside the door. That sound pulled him out of his thoughts and Shelian placed the flower back. He was just about to ask who it was when he realized that the knocking wasn't on Poochie Shrine's door, but rather the village head's house next door. In between the knocks, the delicate voice of a woman sounded. Is anyone home? Exchange old for new, exchange old for new. I have a brand new robe that I have no use for, and I want to find a set of old clothes that I might fancy. Are any masters in the house willing? Is anyone home? Without him needing to go search, that creature actually came knocking all by itself. She knocked and inquired after every house, yet not a single household opened their door to her. Naturally, when Shirian wasn't collecting scraps, he would host lectures at Pucci Shrine, educating all those aunties and grannies on hundreds of little tricks on how to identify evil. To run into such an obviously strange, uninvited guest in the middle of the night, no villagers would pay it any mind. People of today weren't as easy to deceive as in the olden days. That creature knocked all around, but still no one responded. Finally, it came to Poochie Shrine's door. Shillian held his breath, waiting tensely. Yet it seemed that before that creature even knocked, it could feel that this wasn't a place she should have come. With an eye or, her footsteps sounded as if she meant to leave. Shillian quickly called out, Wait, I want to exchange. Then he whispered to Lang Ying. Open the door quickly. Don't be scared. Nothing will happen. Lang Ying was not scared at all. He went up and opened the door. Outside the door stood a girl, her figure slender and sensual. Just by the bottom half of her face, one could tell that she was lovely and charming. However, she was wearing a headscarf, covering the top half of her face. It was as if she didn't have eyes, looking rather unnerving. She glanced inside and covered her mouth as she giggled. Dao Jung, what kind of old clothes did you want to use to exchange for my new ones? Shilian was still soaking in the water barrel, simply to make it lower its guard. He smiled and said, that will depend on what your new clothes look like. That girl extended an arm and gave it a gentle shake. From her bag, a shining brocade robe was shook out and rolled open to reveal itself. Glamorous and beautiful, but the style seemed to be a bit old and it was emitting an air of evil all over. Shelian praised, beautiful, beautiful. Lang Ying, give this lady that set of clothes I brought back from town. Lang Ying handed the robe over with only one hand. That girl exchanged the new robe and giggled, receiving the old one. As she was about to turn around, her face suddenly dropped, like something had pinched her hand. She screamed, throwing the old robes onto the ground. Within the heap of that hemp robe was Ruya, who was coiled up in a bundle, having snuck in who knows when. It peeped out of the sleeve like a white viper, hissing at the girl. 
And that bull wasn't a girl either. A scream and a jump later, her headscarf was pecked off by the ambushing Roya and it fell onto the ground. Although the bottom half of her face was enchanting, the top half of her face was full of wrinkles, extremely old, forming a horrifying contrast. What girl? This was clearly an 80-year-old hat.